Hey everyone, I'm Richard here today to answer a question that's been bothering me since E3. Is the new Xbox One S here faster than the original model or isn't it? Comments from Gears of War developer Rod Ferguson suggested extra CPU and GPU power in the new box, but Microsoft quickly backtracked saying that although extra processing power was unlocked to support HDR, high dynamic range, there'd be literally no impact to existing games. So, well, I've spent a day analysing a bunch of games, and yes, the new Xbox is definitely faster. So, to understand why, here's a look at the inside of the new Xbox One S. We peel back the outer shell and the metallic inner casing, and next we pull back the cooling assembly. Okay, so that's the new Xbox One processor. It's a 16 nanometer FinFET chip versus the 28 nanometers of the original. 33% smaller and quite a bit more power efficient. And yes, it has been overclocked. Well, the GPU at least for sure. We know that the core frequency there has increased from the stock 853 MHz to 914 MHz in the S. Now that's 7.1% faster, but the knock-on effect of the GPU overclock is that the processor's 32 megs of ES RAM have also been overclocked, and both of these factors can have an impact on gaming. Now, in an interview I've just conducted with Microsoft, I was told that, and I quote, some games, ones that utilize dynamic resolution and or unlock frame rates, may see a very minor performance improvement. Our testing internally, that's Microsoft's testing by the way, has shown this to be pretty minor and is only measurable on certain games, so we didn't want to make it a selling point for the new console. Okay, so let's show you how that combination of the GPU and the ESRAM overclock can have something of a dramatic increase on performance. This is Project Cars. We've got a nice replay here in stormy conditions. Tons of alpha effects, plenty of cars, a big stress test for the processor. And while the frame rate isn't unlocked, we rarely hit the 60 FPS target here, so it's as good as. And yeah, as Microsoft says, we get higher performance. The thing is that, as you can see, it's not insignificant. Across the clip we're looking at a 7% boost overall, 47.1 FPS versus 44. Okay, so 3 frames per second, it's hardly a big deal is it? Until you look at performance in context. Different areas see larger boosts than others, and yes this can be felt in gameplay. But this is a replay, not gameplay, but Project Cars replay feature also allows us to rewind the action and see it from the perspective of the actual gameplay camera. And here the average shifts, 49.6 FPS for the One S, 44.4 for the old console. Now that's an 11% increase, and yeah, it can go higher during in-the-moment gameplay comparisons. Next up, let's check out our go-to game for console benchmarking, IO Interactive's Hitman, 1080p, with an unlocked frame rate. You might have heard us discuss it before, as a point of comparison with PlayStation 4. It too has an unlocked frame rate, so yeah, once again we note a consistent lead, about 6% in this cutscene. And as we move into gameplay, that actually rises to 8%, but take care here. Unlike Project Cars, it's not entirely like-for-like -like footage, so there will be some margin for error here. Okay, so while we're filming this, we're still waiting for word from Microsoft on whether the CPU component in the processor has been overclocked or not. I'd say that if it has, the impact is minimal. Regular Digital Foundry viewers will note that we use the Paris stage in Hitman for CPU testing, and this area actually runs faster on Xbox One than it does on PlayStation 4. So what happens when it's One versus One S? Interesting results actually. The consistent differential between the graph lines is gone. The One S is only very slightly faster in some limited scenarios. So it's my contention that the bottleneck here is mostly CPU in nature, and the One S GPU clock boost is less effective overall. So yeah, if the One S does have a CPU boost, it's margin of error stuff. And that may explain the paltry improvement we see here in the Resident Evil 5 remaster. Once again, the One S isn't slower, but it's hardly faster either. This game doesn't hit a locked 60 FPS, and we kind of think it's a CPU bottleneck in most scenarios once again. In fact, it's interesting to see the fleeting moments where the One S does pull ahead, as this shows us what the GPU overclock is capable of, but really there's not much in it. So up until now, we've focused on games where Microsoft has signposted to us that we're likely to see improvements unlock frame rates, 60 FPS targets, that kind of thing. But most console video games aim for 30 FPS instead, right? 
So can the Xbox One S GPU clock boost help at all there? Well first up, let's take a look at Rise of the Tomb Raider. The game's pretty well optimised overall, but you will find minor instabilities. As we traverse the village in the geothermal valley here, take a look at the overall performance level. Yeah, it's pretty much 30 FPS on both, but pay attention to the tear line indicators at the top and bottom of the graph. On top we have Xbox One S, and on bottom that's the original Xbox One. You'll note that the new hardware doesn't completely eliminate tearing, but there's a lot less of it. And in this section here, where Lara is surrounded by highly detailed NPCs, there's a consistent drop to performance on the older hardware, but there's no impact at all on Xbox One S, which stays locked to the 30 FPS target. Next up, let's take a look at Batman Arkham Knight. Just like Tomb Raider, it has a 30 FPS target, but it tears much more frequently when the engine is under stress. And as you can see here in this like-for-like -like footage from the game intro, while the One S is still prone to tearing, it's less of an issue than it is on the original Xbox One hardware. There's not too much tearing to speak of across the clip, but there's a 2.6x increase in torn frames on the older Xbox One hardware. But the fact that there is tearing at all on the One S suggests either a heavy rendering load or more likely a bottleneck elsewhere in the system, like background streaming hitting the CPU hard for instance. Okay, so like-for-like like cutscenes are one thing, but anyone who's played Arkham Knight knows that it's the Batmobile driving sections that really hammer the engine hard, causing some big frame rate drops and lots of tearing. So we've not got 100% exact like-for-like like footage here, but the trend here is still fairly obvious. Performance here is around 4% higher on the Xbox One S, but crucially, pay attention to the frame time graph. The stuttering is pretty bad on both, but it's clearly worse on original hardware. And that's what you can feel in actual gameplay. So let's get this straight then. Unlock frame rates. Yes, the Xbox One S will be faster. Games that can't quite hit 60 FPS. Yeah, it's faster there too, dramatically so sometimes. 30 FPS games, well there's not so much of an improvement, but there is still an improvement. Xbox One S is like the console equivalent to a factory overclock graphics card. The same, but a bit better. But Microsoft is right not to make a selling point of this, because as you've seen, sometimes the improvement is really slight, and sometimes there's no improvement whatsoever. So we've analysed a lot of games over the years, and most recently Fallout 4 has attracted a lot of attention. Now that game hitches and stutters and drops frames and should be the ultimate 30 frames per second workout for the Xbox One S. But as you can see here, both consoles, old and new, are handing in totally identical results. Xbox One S will never be slower than the existing hardware, but there will be scenarios where you will see no improvement whatsoever. Okay then, just to be clear here, this has been a processor test and you may well get some variation according to storage. Now to factor that out of the equation, we installed all of our games onto the Xbox One S here, but then moved them onto SSD external storage for easy portability between both consoles. And to be clear, all tests here were based on fresh captures from fully patched up games. Oh, and one more thing. Yes, the GPU boost extends to Xbox 360 back compat titles too. Now, I didn't have too much time to run extended tests here, but here's a quick look at Alan Wake's American Nightmare. This has minor dips below the 30 FPS target, and yes, those are either lessened or completely ironed out with the Xbox One S. Okay then, Xbox One S. Yes, it is faster. Are you likely to notice the difference? In the majority of cases, probably not. But yeah, it adds a small layer of additional polish to some games. And when you can't reach the frame rate targets on older Xbox One hardware, this one will get you closer to 30 FPS, 60 FPS, whatever. Check out our video review elsewhere on the channel to see what other charms the new Xbox One S has. But for now, do like and subscribe. You won't see reports like this anywhere else, and we will work overtime to bring you the coolest stories. That's all I've got for you right now, but bearing in mind the results seen here, if you think there's a game we should be testing on the Xbox One S, please do let us know in the comments. But for now, thanks for watching.